Bach negotiation. Uh, we've given you the uh, fat pattern for this situation, and uh, we're, we're giving you some of the private facts that only each of the parties knows about themselves and don't know about each other. Uh, so uh, we don't have a copy of Deborah's private facts. I'm going to read those to you. Um, we've also given you a copy of the collaboration agreement, the Drama Skill Collaboration Agreement. So that's really what this uh, session is about. It's about people working together and how they sort these things out and how their own personal issues are brought into a negotiation and how you might resolve these kind of issues. Um, so fact pattern one, and then uh, fact pattern two will be tomorrow. Um, Amy, what time is tomorrow's? 11 or 10? 10 a.m. We'll be doing uh, the negotiation with the theater between the authors and the theater to license the, the show that they're writing. So this is collaboration, and tomorrow will be the licensing agreement. <clears throat> so the fact pattern here is we have songwriter David and playwright Deborah. Um, David is a high school music teacher in suburban Minnesota, a commuter train ride from Minneapolis for nearly 20 years. He's also the musical director and pianist for the local nonprofit theater with which, which uh, he's been associated for the last 10 years. He's made it known to the theater's artistic director that he has written many unpublished songs over the years, and it's his dream to stage them at the theater as a concert. The theater's artistic director, Jane, has listened to the songs, and she likes some of them very much. She's advised David to adapt them for a narrative song cycle or a musical instead. If he does so, the theater would be interested in presenting it. Since David is not a playwright and doesn't have strong narrative or writing skills, he will have to collaborate with a librettist to adapt his songs into a stage-worthy musical. So Jane introduces David to playwright Deborah. Deborah graduated from an MFA playwriting program in New York a few years ago and has been a guild member ever since. Good for Deborah. <laughs> She's been working temp jobs in the city of, in, in Minneapolis to pay for her bills, to pay her bills so she can keep writing. Some of her plays have won contests and have been selected for festivals, earning her some recognition in the region and she's had a few staged readings of her work at New York City nonprofits. Artistic director Jane recently produced one of Deborah's plays. It was her first full production of a full-length work, which got excellent reviews and had a sold-out run. She's never written a musical, but has read and studied librettos in the BMI workshop and is excited by the idea. Jane arranges a series of meetings for Deborah and David so they can discuss the project. David is impressed by Deborah's obvious writing talent and youthful enthusiasm, and Deborah finds David's songs original and thrilling. They seem to be in sync creatively, and so agree to work together to create the show. The working title is Viking Funeral. <laughs> Jane gives them a deadline to present an outline for their Viking show, plus one full scene and three songs. If it looks good, Jane will ask the theater's board of directors to fund a developmental production, which generally includes a small but not insignificant commission fee. Before they begin, however, Deborah has been advised by the Guild to negotiate a collaboration agreement with David. Neither is represented by an agent or attorney. So then we deal with each, now there are facts that each of them, Deborah and David, know about themselves but don't know about each other, which, with, which I will share with you now. You have uh, songwriter David's uh, facts on the back of the, the scenario. Um, but Deborah's have not been given to you, so I'm going to read those. You can read David's on your own. Um, Deborah's living hand to mouth in a crappy apartment in Minneapolis. And she may have to move back in with her parents in the suburbs if she can't start making better money. She's not even sure how she's going to keep paying for the commuter train from the city out to the theater. She hates temping, but it's better than waiting tables or writing copy for her dad's ad agency. She misses New York and the off-off Broadway theater scene and wishes she could get stuff produced there instead in the sticks of Minnesota. She's a great playwright and she knows it, and though she hasn't written a musical theater libretto, her work in the BMI workshop gives her the confidence to do it and some experience with collaboration. What she knows about business and negotiations could fit in a shoebox, and she doesn't care much about that stuff. But she knows it's important for her to understand if she's going to be a professional. Artistic director Jane loves her work and looks at Deborah as her discovery, but Deborah was less than impressed by Jane's direction of her play. 
She loves many of David's songs, but some of the lyrics are dreadful and amateurish. She can help revising the lyrics where necessary. She's a tireless self-promoter and networker, her own website, social media, etc. But her single-mindedness has left no room for any romantic relationships. Why I'm telling you that, I have no idea. <laughs> Once I start writing a story, <laughs> it takes on a life of its own. Um, she's a loyal Guild member and believes in the rights of authorship and will abide by Guild standards where possible. Her dad told her they had no, her dad didn't tell her they had Viking ancestors. What she says is, Vikings? What are Vikings? Um, and you can see David's fact pattern. Uh, he doesn't want to teach for much longer. He's burned out and is thinking about retirement and would love to be involved with musical theater at this point in his life. His lovely wife is a good friend of the artistic director, Jane. She was the one who introduced him to her in the first place. He's financially well off with a good pension coming his way after he retires. He's insecure about his songwriting and so overcompensates by being defensive and protective of his work. But he does have raw, undeveloped talent. He's prickly by nature, but has a good heart. He's lived in this town all his life and hasn't really traveled much beyond Minneapolis. He thinks he's a good businessman. He read Deborah's play and didn't really understand it very well, though he tells her it was great, because what does he know? He's never heard of the Dramatist Guild and is suspicious of unions. His Nor Nordic heritage makes him think of himself as a descendant of Vikings. He's proposed that the show has a Viking theme. Let's bring our songwriter and playwright in. Playwright Deborah and songwriter David. Welcome. So you guys have gotten together. Deborah has invited David to a discussion about working out a collaboration agreement. Deborah, the floor is yours. Hey, David. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm a member of the Guild, the Dramatist Guild. They're great. I mean, maybe you I should. I actually don't know it. why I would know that because I've never heard of the Dramatist Guild. No, so it's a great organization. They they help playwrights and composers and lyricists and um, you know I'll tell you more about it after. But they gave me this collaboration agreement. And they really strongly suggested that we look at it since we'll be working together. And I hate to do this because. Um, I mean, I hate this stuff. <laughs> what stuff? This is like legal Yeah, you're springing junk. this on me right now. Mm. Oh, I, I thought I emailed it to you to look at before. Okay. Must have gone into the ether. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, you could take a look at it. It's, it's um, basically an agreement that they suggest that we have so that we can form our relationship, so that we know what we're doing 10 years from now well. to get some of this stuff out of the way so we can just do what we do. I think we're both adults. We can negotiate, you know, figure out what we're going to do with that. Uh, you know, my concern about this is that's a union contract for a uh, union member, and I'm, I've never even heard of this organization before. So no, no, know. it's not. You can join. Anyone can join. Well, not. Well. You have to be a little bit. <laughs> right. Right, but no, it's <laughs> not, it's not at all a union. <laughs> it's just, it's really just a model to sort of think about some of the things. Let, let me tell you, because I've sort of been through this before. Um, you have been to just- through what? Well, I've been, you know, I had my play produced. You're a playwright. Produced. Yeah. yeah, I had Did my play produced. I didn't know you collaborated. Okay, we're gonna freeze there. <laughs> this is a standard uh, moment at the beginning of this discussion where one of the members has brought in some objective criteria, some way of looking at this that the other one doesn't know anything about. And this could be an easy place for this thing to break down. Um, let's, pr let's suppose, for the sake of this negotiation, that Deborah's able to convince David <laughs> that there are criteria that exist in the universe that he may want to uh, at least listen to. Okay. And we'll take it from there. Okay, Deborah, I, I, you know, I see your point. And uh, you know, as long as we're not Decide as you're not asking me to sign anything today, so I can check it out myself. We can come sure. to some to some agreement. Sure, and you know I talked to the and and look, I'm not trying to um, 
do anything wrong here. I'm just trying to get us on the right page. Right. So I don't know if you want to go through this. I mean, I could tell you some of the things that I'm concerned about um, going forward, I whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure I have control over the work and the proper billing, and I get you know whatever percentage of money I'm due. If okay, well, that one's a little bit easier. So um, the people at the Guild said that we theoretically could divide things. E uh, what did they say? Hmm. Uh, well, here's the thing. So you don't have to divide this according to the way that they said it, but they said to give one third to the book writer, one third to the composer, and one third to the lyricist. But in this case, you know, because I'm really shaping the work um, and I'm really going to be the one with the contacts and the one pushing it forward, I, I just felt like, you know, maybe I'll just get like an extra percentage in that. And uh, they said that's like torch bearing, so that's okay. Well, I was looking at it differently. Uh, I, I was thinking that I might get a little bit of an advantage because maybe you're shaping the book, but you're shaping it based on my songs, and my songs have already uh, gotten good reviews from the, from the AD, Jane. Right, but I mean, I'm an established playwright. I mean, I've won festivals and uh, I had a few competitions and I had that full performance just, just a while ago in this community. So I think a lot of people are going to come for that reason. And, and, and honestly, David, I know I've been through BMI. I've worked with people before. So I, I, I kind of feel like you just need to hear me out a little bit on how we go forward. I'm willing to hear you out a little bit. Well, <laughs> okay. Okay, I didn't want to bring I mean this you up. Said, you I didn't said, want to bring you this said up. You said one third and one third right. for, for each, and I was two thirds of that. Right. Well, I didn't. Which sounds right. okay, uh, but uh, also you you do have some experience, but not with musicals. And and when people leave the theater, they're not going to be whispering monologues to each other. They're going to be hum humming my songs. So well, so I I'm mean, wondering I how much. About it. What's that? I, I would <laughs> differ with that, but I, I mean, I just have to, I didn't want to bring this up because I don't want it to seem um, difficult, but you know, some of your lyrics need to be worked on. I, I worked on them a little bit over here. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I think Let's I freeze right there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another place that a negotiation can go off the rails. Um, when Everybody's invested in their own stuff, you know, and you have to sort of be sensitive to the other person's, what they're bringing to the table. Um, David's not really being uh, um, sensitive to what appears to be uh, uh, Deborah's economic point, and she's responded to that by hitting him where his lyrics are, <laughs> um, which is easily going to drive this thing right into a ditch. Um, so let's see if we can't take a step back from that and say, you know, if we can figure out the economic terms based on our, what are our mutual interests here, what is important to each of us, and think about cooperative negotiating rather than competitive negotiating. This actually could move forward. So let's take it from the split of the royalties and see if we can get past that. Well, I, I can say, you know, we've, we've done a little collaboration together and, and I've been really happy with it. I think we have good chemistry. We're going to disagree on a lot of this stuff. I, uh, I think I have more business experience than you do, but you may have, you have more uh, dialogue experience than I do, that's for sure. So, um, uh, you know, I, I have no problem. Look, I want to move beyond the royalties if we can and put a pin in it as keeping it standard, keeping it, uh, and okay, I'll check well it out. Okay, well, maybe can we, if, if, if I end up writing some of the lyrics, we can maybe look at that point again. We can, but, it, but then you're open to look if I end up changing some of the dialogue. <laughs> so, 
So let's talk about the royalties and discuss. I mean, I would, I would rather have us try to respect each other's work as much as possible with, uh, it sounds like you're not even considering touching the music, so let's assume that for okay. now. No, I would never. And I won't touch the. No, the you write great songs. Okay, <laughs> you know what, let's just, we'll just keep it standard if we have to. So what's the standard for this kind so of thing with, with commenting on lyrics and music and book? What's, well what's the standard? And I'll, I'll, I'll co corroborate whatever you tell me now. They said basically every authorial unit should get the third and, and look, if we'll exchange, we'll collaborate, whatever, you'll, you'll give me comments, I'll give you comments and we'll, hopefully we'll Okay, so I'm not day. losing control of my music or losing control mm -hmm. of my lyrics because Jane does like those songs so I think we should lean no, towards keeping I, them or at least if you have suggestions, I'm open to them but I don't want to be com you know, compelled to, to have to incorporate your suggestions. No, I think we work on our own parts and we try to make it work together. Yeah, that's I, I mean, good. I certainly, if, if look, if it doesn't work out, I, I definitely would want to use some of this stuff in another piece, so. What stuff? Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> just some of the ideas <laughs> I've put, I think could work in another context. So I just want to, yes, I will own my stuff and you own your stuff and we'll, we'll divide it. Uh, in, in those thirds. Okay. Okay, but then the thing, is, so that's fine. So I think we just write it. I'll have someone. And I'll guess, corroborate it and we'll, we'll, we'll tighten it up before okay. we sign. Yeah, but the one thing that you were talking about in terms of control, I'm just thinking it for the future of the work, being that I have connections, I'm a promoter. I mean, I have so many followers on Twitter. Um, I heard you were a temp. <laughs> Yeah, that's my day job, but have you seen, I, I do that so that I can, I can do what I'm, I love. Do you know what my day job is? You work in a high school. As, as a musician. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. All I'm trying to say <laughs> is that I, I, I do feel that I'm pretty good at marketing and putting things forward. I do have a name um, in the industry, in New York. I have contacts. Um, and, and I don't, I want to have, I see that I'm not getting the majority of the money here, which puts me in a bad spot, but at least I want to be able to make some decisions going forward and have a real say in that. So maybe since you're getting the larger amount of money, I could get sort of a, an extra vote. What? Yeah. Um, Let's freeze there. <laughs> um, from the private facts that you've, you guys know about. She's hard up for cash. He's uh, insecure about the work and wants to protect it. So if they were being really honest with each other about what their real needs are here, she'd have put on the table the fact that, look, for me to work on this show, I need to be able to afford to get out to this place. <laughs> I, need, I need more of the money than might be standard. Um, so they ended up in the opposite situation where she's acceding to his monetary demands while going for the control issues. Um, that's going to drive this off a cliff because this is going to require more openness and cooperation and honesty if there's going to be a meeting of the minds here. Um, when you get into competitive negotiating, that's about people taking positions and then locking into those positions and it becomes uh, um, a conflict. Cooperative negotiation is where both of you are looking at the problem and trying to find ways to resolve it together. You're working together against a common problem. But there only can be, that can only work if you're sharing information, if you're willing to uh, let your guard down a little bit and be willing to hear the other person and try and identify the need, not just the position. What is the need behind the position? She's talking about, she was talking about two-thirds, one-third, maybe I can get a little more. Why is she asking for that? Because she needs the money. And if you want to work with her, you have to hear that and say, well, is money that important to me? Is money important to David in this situation? You saw his private facts. Not really. He's, well, he's, he's doing fine financially. He has an artistic interest here. 
he has a control interest, he has other interests. So his financial interest isn't what's driving him. And if he hears her pushing financial interest, that's an opportunity for him to say, okay, let's do something financial for you. That way I can guarantee my control of the work. My, I, I don't have to worry about, I get other things. I can trade that essentially. So you have to listen when you're negotiating to what, not just the position people are taking, but what are the needs behind the positions. Um, let's talk about uh, the, uh, the billing. What are, are, are there gonna be any issues in billing here? What do you think? Well, should we launch in or yeah. do we want? Well, uh, you know, you said that, that your temp is a day job and you do have a, a good rep, you've won some things and maybe that's not just. I don't need the money so much. Uh, at this point, but I don't want to be a high school teacher for any longer than I have to be, <laughs> and uh, I hate children. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, maybe uh, you know, if if uh, I can help, talk to Jane, or even uh, help get you out here financially so that you can work on the show here and not worry about that stuff. Um, you know, the idea for me is that I want to increase my reputation as an artist so that I can get other theatrical work commissions or... No, I mean, that would be amazing because, yeah, I didn't want to tell you all that. But, uh, well, I knew you were really a hard, And it's going to take so much work for me even just to research this whole Viking thing. Uh, I mean, that's going to take so much time out of, out of even the temp work, so it's, it's going to hit. It's going to hurt. Uh, but uh, I want to mm. do this, and I want to help you. I want to take you with me. The, the well music let's, is let's, great. Let's the take each is, other is <laughs> with each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we'll, wor we'll try to work out some of the money stuff, but, you know, I, uh, and I want you to research that. I know it's not difficult, especially, you know, you're not of Nordic descent, like me, and I'm very proud of that, that I'm a Norseman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so maybe I can help point you towards so, some research materials and, and make sure that's done. But um, what, what kind I do of materials? Want, uh, I don't know. Library. I have a personal library of Nordic <laughs> folklore. <laughs> <laughs> I worship Odin. <laughs> <laughs> I think he sacrifices uh, but, but what goats. I do want, I, uh, but uh, you know, th I'm willing to do that. But like I said, uh, like you said, you know, we can sort of rise together. Okay. And um, uh, you know, my understanding, when I've seen billing on on other uh, posters, is that the composer is often uh, billed either first or up top, below the title. And I'd like to honor that that standard. I'm pretty sure it's alphabetical, which would still put you. First, <laughs> <laughs> I have to be first for my reason. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean that that would be <laughs> fine. Look, I, the only thing that I feel is again, like if I do end up writing some of those lyrics, that I I I get credit for some of it, even if it's something additional lyrics or, or you know we'll come up we could come up with something else just to be true and honest to what we're doing because we both want to be represented in the world for what we do. Look, I, I admire your youth and enthusiasm on this, uh, but um, I do want to tell you that I'm kind you know, I'm older. I'm, I'm a little bit more set in my ways. I rub people the wrong way a lot of times. So, uh, you know, you're going to have to deal with the fact that I'm very, you know, these lyrics, I think I would be surprised if they could be improved upon, frankly. And uh, I'm open to it, but I, I just don't, I don't see how it would be better. Uh, but, right. you know, whatever, we can take that as it goes. I, I, as long as I'm getting the billing that I want and as long as I'm billed as the, uh, you know, if, if you do half the lyrics, I, uh, I would be shocked. And okay. Uh, well, I mean, well, I guess we'll have to. Is there, is there someone else in the relationship who you might both defer to uh, about whether lyrics could be improved or not? Yeah, my wife's best friend, Jane, <laughs> <laughs> who's the artistic director who's gonna be producing this. 
So do you, do you feel comfortable leaving this with uh, Jane to see if, um, well, I'll you be, know? You know, I, I have a couple of friends from the BMI workshop. I thought maybe we could bring some of them in maybe at some point too. I mean, I have, I Are met this guy. Are your friends named I, Steven Schwartz? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll the work guy I worked lyrics. with knew him. Yeah. Um, so he clearly must be good if he knew Steven Schwartz. Mm. And, and <laughs> I, I think that, uh, I mean, it's something to think about as well. Uh, I think bringing in people that are really established because we w we want to get this play out. I mean, you look, you want to be successful. You don't want to be teaching high school. Want to get this play off Broadway? Yeah, I feel like we're backsliding on on the uh, approvals. Uh, I want to have approval over my lyrics, and if I end up incorporating more of your lyrics than I thought I would, which again would be shocking to me, then we can discuss it at that point. But I wouldn't want to bring in all New York people who are just gonna usurp my position. I'm, I wrote the songs. I'm, I'm the core of this work right now. I'm all that exists of this work is mine. What happens, you know, when one party is, um, is trying to p control the work and the other one wants to see it move forward and doesn't think that uh, the other party knows enough about what they're doing to have that happen? That that agree that forget the agreement, that relationship is not going to work. Um, again, honesty early on, either she is going to be willing to go along with his, uh, uh, you know, uh, narcissism, <laughs> or she might be willing to s accede to the director's opinion on this as a tiebreaker. Um, or she's going to say, this guy's just too much of an amateur for me to bother with. This is, you know, I need to make money. This is, this guy is going to keep me from ever getting the show anywhere where I'm going to make any money from it. Um, so depending on which avenue she chooses, that's going to decide whether this moves forward or not. So let's assume for the sake of this conversation, that she has, although maybe not crazy about Jane and a little suspicious of what her relation, Jane's relationship is to David, um, whoever's gonna direct this thing is gonna have some say. And that's the way a musical works. So she'll make her points about the lyrics to the director and the director will make the points that sh she agrees with to David. And if David wants to get this show on, he's gonna have to deal with those comments. If they end up being a significant amount of lyrics, they're going to work out some way of credit and money to uh, acknowledge her contributions in those areas. There's no reason he wouldn't if, if he feels like he can trust Jane's judgment. He may not trust Deborah's at this early phase, but he may trust Jane. So uh, let's assume that they're both willing to go along with uh, you know, Jane's point and just move to, how long are you gonna, guys gonna commit to this collaboration? Is this, is, is this forever? Are you just gonna keep working on this until one of you dies or what's the deal? Uh, I, I was thinking um, if the play didn't go well, you know, maybe two years. Well, it's gonna be a musical, right? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, you're um, right, yes. Two years. Freudian slip I right there. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Yeah, I, I put two years in, in that paragraph um, so that if it, if it doesn't come together and work out, if we don't hit, say, an off-Broadway level, um, that we can split up maybe in two, two years. You know, we'll just end this and, and then go our ways. Like, because I, I, like I told you, I, just, I have to make life work. I can't, I want this to work and I'm willing to put the effort in. Don't get me wrong, I just don't, I can't sit here forever. I hear you. I can't sit in Hastings, Minnesota <laughs> forever either. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was actually going to go for one year because I think these songs are hot. They have some of, the, um, some of the musical idioms of the day that might go stale after two years, so I want to guard against that. Uh, would you be all right with one year? Well, we'll try for I mean, We'll just work for a year, and then if it doesn't work out, I, it I just don't know out. that within a, a year it's going to be enough time. I mean, it's going to take us at least six months to write this. 
What do you think we could accomplish in a year? Not off Broadway. I can I can see that. I don't know. I mean, Jane said maybe we could have a performance here. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's performed here and does a full run, uh, then uh, you know, a full run within a year. And uh, then if it doesn't, you know, we can always... Uh, well, if we have the performance here, you can't pull the songs out after the year. Right, so we need a performance right. here within the year. So one performance... With, okay, one how about performance. A I, oh. I don't know. Uh, you know, I think it has to go past previews. You know, I've seen theater from, right. m from my point of view of, of, of being a musical director, but, you know, I've never discussed this level of detail uh, on, on a production. So, uh, so uh, you know, I, what would you do in a play? You have a play for um, how long do you work with somebody? Have you ever collaborated on a play? Uh, no, uh, no, but I've had some experience uh, with people. <laughs> so what do you suggest? Well, I, okay, I think, I think that we should give it two years, and if we have a production within those two years at this theater here, then we should be able to move forward. Okay, so Can we do one year and then uh, with an option to extend it another year if, if we're oh, It's close? so complicated, David. Okay. Extend I don't it? I, I don't I even know if you can do I that. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin this because we had a couple good collaborations. This is it for me. I mean, I can't, I, I can't with the contract again. Um, you can't with the contract. No, together. that's it. That's <laughs> it. I, I feel like one shot at this, and let's just get it over with. Okay, the, let's freeze here. The um, first of all, the, uh, the the lack of ease with actual process of entering into a contract is a real thing, and a lot of artists have it. Um, the one who feels least comfortable with it can either undermine the, the negotiation by not, by being paralyzed by the process, or you can get educated about it and feel empowered enough to enter into a conversation with someone that you know doesn't make you feel like an adolescent. So <laughs> that's part of what the Guild is about, is you talk to us, we, we walk you through the contract and give you the options about well, you can do this or you can do that, and this is why you would do this or do that. Right now, what they're talking about, the length of the collaboration period, this is about at what point does each of their contributions merge into one show that is now going to exist indefinitely thereafter? How long are they going to work together to put their book and lyrics together and with the music before they say, you know what, we never got anywhere with this, I'm going to take my music, you're going to take your book, go our separate ways. Maybe you'll, I'll use my music with another book writer, maybe you'll use your book, uh, I don't know, I'll make a play out of something. But at some point, we're going to want to move on. Life is too short. So you're going to pick a moment at which time your play and, and the, uh, the play and the music will merge. This is called merger. How odd a, t a title. Um, so what, p what is the point of merger? For one of them, one of them wants merger quicker than the other. Whoever feels like their contribution is the more valuable, they'll want, um, they'll want the, the, ter the period of collaboration to be short because they'll want to be able to move on if things aren't working out. They don't want merger right away. They want a short period with a high level of production to end up with the merger. The other, p the other writer, you might be calling the subordinate writer, um, the one who came onto the project second or who feels like they're not as invested in the project or whatever it is emo emotionally, they're the ones who's, who are going to feel like, well, his music's really good. I need to glom onto it as fast as possible. Because that's my book is not going to be worth anything without his music. It's about Vikings. I don't know shit about Vikings. He's going <laughs> to give me material about Vikings, so I'm going to be dependent on him for the story. I'm not really going to do anything with this. I need his music if this is going to have any value to me at all. So she's going to want um, a merger as soon as possible. She's going to want it like the, the day they write it. 
and he's going to want it when it opens on Broadway, you know. Um, so the negotiation is between those two points, essentially. Where is the merger point? And again, that's a function of your personality. That's a function of what you perceive the value of what you're bringing to the table is. So it's, it's very subjective. There's no one right point of negotiation. Um, let's, uh, so let's assume that David uh, has these hot, you know, he's very filled with his notion of this music and he's been encouraged in that by Jane. And he's controlling sort of the underlying material, this Viking material. So he needs her to make a narrative and a book out of this, but he feels like his music is th the key. And she feels like, I'm not gonna be able to do much with this except with his stuff here, but if I'm able to make something good out of it, I know people in New York, and this play can have a longer life if I'm attached to it. So where does, uh, where does termination, where does uh, length of uh, agreement, and where does the merger point happen in that situation? What do you guys think? Well, it sounded to me like we were starting to get towards like opening night mm -hmm. uh, of uh, at this theater, mm -hmm. um, which uh, you know I, I suppose that's okay. I, I would want, um, I guess, if if our work merges, does that mean if Nike comes along and wants to use one of my tunes as a jingle that I can't do that? I can't, I mean, could mm -hmm. I like split the money with you? Because that would be a huge boon for me. Or how do we handle yeah, that, Deborah? Yeah, we could Deborah? split that money. Okay. So if Nike comes and wants to use your song, we'll do 50-50. That's a great idea. <laughs> I think I <laughs> spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> now, if David calls, joins the guild, and calls us, and calls Deborah, De lawyer Deborah, not playwright Deborah. <laughs> what would lawyer Deborah tell David if his collaborator, his playwright collaborator, wanted half of his, you know, s uh, musical uh, small rights and, and publishing rights and all that stuff? Lawyer Deborah, why would you do that? <laughs> 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 you wrote that song. Is it standard? And if the book isn't being utilized in any manner, right. then what right does that book writer have right. to that song that can be sung at a bar? Uh, and that's a very good argument for the book writer. And book writers have been singing that song <laughs> for a very long time and have not gotten too far. They are. <laughs> they are. And, you know, uh, depending on the power of the particular book writer, some book writers have been able to get a share of the composer's small performance rights, pub music publishing rights, sync rights, and all those things. But it's a very rare. It's very unusual. Um, the music has a life and a copyright separate and apart from the show. So the, you know, the grand rights in the songs, the, s the rights of the music in the show, that's something that the two of them share when they do a, 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 a CD of the show, a cast album, they both get royalties from that. But only the, s the s composer and the lyricist also get mechanical royalties, the small performing rights royalties from that, which only exist in each separate song separate and apart from the show. You're right, the value may have been created by the show, but it's also true that there are songs that are famous from shows that I've never heard of again. Um, so the copyright law recognizes value in each of the individual songs separate and apart from the show, and that's what David brought up was these separate music rights, and lawyer Deborah would tell you that's not something the book writer normally shares in. Now if she's the lyricist too on that song, then yes. She's in for that. And they can generally, they'll generally, depending on her share of the lyrics, let's say she rewrote half the lyrics. Uh, so she'll get half of the lyricist's share, and he'll get the full composer's share and the other half of the lyricist's share. So he's getting three quarters, basically, and she'll get a quarter. That's how that would work out. 
But I, I didn't have to be a member of, the, of any guild or union to know that I had just made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> because she accepted it <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> That's also it's about negotiations, is reading. <laughs> <laughs> when you say something and the other person's like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but again, it's the difference between cooperative negotiation and, uh, you know, um, competitive. competitive, sorry. Competitive negotiation. I mean, the, did you want to talk? Well, do you want us to go into negotiation of when? Of termination and, and merger. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a basic framework that uh, will be merged at the uh, opening performance right. of this. Uh, of this. Right. Uh, what happens if we're not? Or what happens if things just fall apart beforehand? Uh, uh, like I said, we've had some good experiences. We've got some creative chemistry, which I, which I appreciate. Uh, but... Uh, this has been grueling, <laughs> and it could go either way in my mind now. And uh, you know, I like you. I want to always be friends with you, but at the same time, um, you want a piece of my life. You know, there's there's a lot in contention. So what if what if I want out? Do you know? Can you tell me what the standard is for that? And then if uh, and then I can corroborate well, that. Well, I I mean, if if things aren't working out, we can we can part ways. Um, there was a section in here about rejecting you. A, u a unit, sorry, a unit. A unit. Another Freudian. So story. there's there's <laughs> that, <laughs> um, but you know I I I do know I do remember that you know, I think you know if we give this five year if we can commit the material for for five years, right? And if we don't if we don't get to the opening here within five years, then I think that's giving it everything we can for, for this purpose. And then we can... Well, I thought it was one year, and we can... Uh, I want to finish this topic first, that if, if, uh, if it's not working out, can I use pieces of your book and then, like, you go away? <laughs> Okay, this is. <laughs> we're gonna so we're gonna uh, tie it up now, and we're gonna pick up more of this tomorrow in in, in the mock too. But um, what I'm, what they're talking about here is how long are we gonna collaborate for? What's the date of termination of this agreement? If we get to that date and we haven't reached the merger point, that is a performance. If they agree that a performance at this theater will be the merger point. If we haven't gotten there within a year, two years, five years, whatever the length of the agreement is, then the contract terminates and everybody gets their piece and moves on. There's also, and if you do merge, then the contract extends indefinitely and it controls your relationship thereafter. Um, there's also an important provision in the contract about, you know, dividing the baby at, the, you know, sort of the post, uh, the prenuptial agreement aspects. What do we do with this show um, if one of us, if it terminates, one of us wants to go on and one of us doesn't, what can I do with your piece? You can either get it back completely, in which case you really haven't made any money out of it, or you can allow me to move forward with it and then you'll benefit if I'm able to do anything with it. So working out that sort of prenup aspect is part of the collaboration agreement and can really, uh, uh, the guild uh, lawyer, uh, whoever you're talking to, can really help walk you through the process of what, what does that look like? And in fact, the Guild has a mediation service. If, you're, if you and your collaborators are both members, you can talk to us about working out the separation agreement and we'll sort of talk you through the process of the fairest way of dividing the baby, if you will. But we'll get much more into it uh, and take questions um, tomorrow after Mach 2 where uh, where uh, songwriter David will negotiate with artistic director Jane about producing the Viking funeral. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>